Hey everybody, your friendly GM Bobby here for another episode of Ask Bobby. Now before we get started, I want to handle a couple of agenda items. The first one of which is talking about a little bit of a format change on the show today. The past couple of weeks I've been thinking that at the beginning of the show I talk about news, stuff that's been going on with the channel. Occasionally, like today that I'm going to do, I want to be able to talk about some things that are on my mind and some general topics that I've been thinking about that I want to get some opinion from the community and just get off my chest. Now I will be answering questions still as major part of the episode and Ask Bobby segment, so to speak, but this whole thing is gonna be called something new and I haven't figured out what I'm gonna call it yet. Next piece of news is that today, the day this video is coming out, February 28th is the greatest day of the year. It is my birthday. That's right, my birthday is February 28th and you guys can get me something awesome by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash complex action. Every single little bit of patronage that happens over there helps this channel become something awesome. In fact, if you have noticed, the color correction in this video is a little bit better. The editing is slightly better quality. That's because my patrons have made it possible for me to get some better editing software because you guys are awesome. Don't forget, it's February 28th. You have two more days till the end of the month because it's a leap year. You got February 29th. And if you sign up today or tomorrow to become a patron, you'll get one of these awesome stickers that I have. And you only get them if you sign up by the end of February. If you sign up after February, that's awesome. I love it. You can get all the other rewards that are associated with the different levels, but you won't get the stickers. There's only a limited amount of these. The other last thing is, guess what just came in? The dice! The dice finally came in, complex action dice. I have been so excited about these dice. They are a reward for my patrons of a certain level. If you want one of these dice in your mailbox every month, then you need to head on over to patreon.com slash complex action check out the reward levels and get yourself signed up. These, I love them. They are amazing. They've got the little shades, the stick figure guy on there. He looks all sad because he's the one side of the dice. I actually did a quick unboxing video for my patrons, but I made it public for everyone to see. So head on over there, I'll put a link in the notes. So now on to everybody's favorite part of the show, the Ask Bobby portion of the show. We've got two great questions today from Patreon patrons. Remember, if you want your questions to have priority and have a better chance of getting answered during the Ask Bobby segments, consider becoming a patron. First question is asked by Jordan Hampton. He asks, I've been looking around and I cannot find clear rules on how weapons suffer damage. Am I missing something? Running Gun has rules to fix them, but one of my players wants to learn the Demolish Gun spell. So as far as I can tell, nowhere in the rule books does it explicitly say, here is how you determine the damage track for a weapon. So you kind of have to get creative and think about how do you do damage to materials in general. So my thinking is that you probably need to treat a gun or any type of weapon as a barrier that is made out of a particular type of material. Fortunately, there's lots of rules for damaging barriers. In fact, I've done some GM screen videos on it. You can check them out here. So let's actually explore the case of using the demolish gun spell in order to damage guns. And this might help figure out exactly how we would approach this, how much damage do guns take before they get destroyed situation. So the way the demolish item spell works, and the item in this case is going to be the gun. So the demolish gun spell is you cast the spell and it does a certain amount of damage to guns. Now guns get to resist that damage, right? The way that they resist the damage is by rolling a certain number of dice that is determined by their object resistance, which can be found on an object resistance table. I don't have the page number for the object resistance, but I'll put it right here in post once I look it up. I forgot to look it up. The object resistance works like this. If it's a natural item, they get a dice pool of three. Uh, manufactured low-tech items get six dice, high-tech manufactured items get nine dice, and highly processed items get 12. Now, nowhere in the examples does it actually state where guns fall in this list, but if it were up to me, I'd say they fall somewhere between low-tech and high-tech manufactured items. Probably high-tech, so that would be a dice pool of nine. So, at my table, you roll your spellcasting of Demolish Gun and the gun gets to resist 
with a dice pool of nine. And in the case of this spell, every three boxes of damage that the gun takes is going to cause it to have a minus one dice pool modifier for any test that's done using the gun. But the question still remains, how much damage can the gun take before it's destroyed? So I think you need to treat this like you're destroying a barrier. And the question is, what is the barrier rating of the gun? So I'd say that it falls somewhere between a heavy material and a reinforced material. So that's a structure rating of somewhere between six and eight. And that is going to mean that the number of sort of damage boxes that it has is between six and eight before it gets destroyed. So I hope that answers your question, Jordan. It's kind of wishy-washy, there's nothing clear, but that's how I would handle it. Next question comes from Clayton Cross, and seriously guys, Jordan Hampton and Clayton Cross are running the board on questions lately. I need some more of my patrons out there to ask me some more questions so that I can stop giving, you know, personal game lessons to Jordan and Clayton here, all right? I need, I need you guys. Step up, let's go. So his question has to do with, and I'm paraphrasing because it was a long question, he's basically saying that the different classes use the different resource rewards in very different ways. So as an example, street samurais, deckers, riggers, they very heavily rely on money, on new yen rewards in order to advance their characters to get better decks, to get better equipment, uh, guns, cyberware, stuff like that. Whereas magicians require very heavily on karma rewards to do things like bind spirits, learn spells, initiate, um, Technomancers fall in that boat as well. The question being, what do you do about this and why is, how do you fix this problem where street samurais, riggers, deckers, they need lots of money and don't need the karma as much, and mages and technomancers and adepts, they need the karma a lot and don't need money as much. So this is a little bit of an issue. Magicians and adepts and whatnot can definitely use money a lot more than you make it out. They use money to initiate, they can they can pay for membership to initiation groups, they can pay for instructors to make it easier and faster for them to learn spells. But I understand your point. I think the issue is more in line and focused on, on people who require so much technology in particular. Street Samurais, Deckers, and Riggers, they're the ones who really suffer a lot from New Yen rewards being potentially low because they have to sink lots of money into advancing their equipment. So I did some looking around and apparently some people on Reddit use a house rule that is derived from the Shadowrun missions rules on the fact that you can trade karma for Nuyen. So a lot of people will allow their players to trade karma and Nuyen, right? The exchange rate apparently is about one karma per 2,000 New Yen. The idea is that if you're trading your karma for New Yen, you're doing some work for the man in your downtime, right? And if you're trading your New Yen for karma, then you're doing some sort of charity work to get yourself some more karma in your downtime. Once per run, it takes a week of downtime and you can only do it up to a maximum of five New Yen, or rather five karma and 10,000 New Yen. I tried looking around on the Shadowrun Missions FAQ to find out where this rule is actually talked about. I didn't look very long, admittedly, but I couldn't find the rule. I trust the people on Reddit probably know what they're talking about, but if somebody can find the rule and I can put it in the notes somewhere to actually specifically reference it, that would be great. But maybe, Clayton Cross, maybe there's an answer to your question about how to balance that out. If you need more money and you don't need as much karma, then just shift it. Try to use that house rule at your table. Shift it into one resource or the other. So I hope that answered your guys' questions. I hope you enjoyed it. I got a newborn still. Got a little bit of energy back, I'm getting into rhythm, but still didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I will in the future, I promise. Again, Complex Action is supported by the generous patronage of people over at patreon.com slash complex action. Head on over there, check out the rewards, there's lots of great stuff, priority on these questions, Google Hangouts, which we just did our first one of not too long ago, it was really fun, had a great time sitting down and talking, and other stuff, dice, you get the stickers if you sign up by the end of the month, all sorts of things. Just check it out, patreon.com slash complex action. Every bit helps me a lot and I love you guys for it. Bye bye. <sighs> Man, today has been a crazy busy day. I have been all over the place. Can't believe I've jumped back in the saddle this quickly. I thought it would take me a little bit longer to recover. I'm running on a lot more coffee than usual. 
I'm feeling pretty good, but it's kind of in that place where I feel like any second now, I'm gonna come crashing down and it's gonna be miserably miserable.